Hello and welcome to Urban Green, where we spotlight South Sound environmental efforts and showcase different ways to get involved in sustainable living practices. I'm your host, Stacey Ellifrit, and today we're coming to you from the Goodwill located on South 38th Street. This winter edition of Urban Green is starting with the Urban Learning segment, where we visit co-working spaces that help their tenants meet other makers and collaborators. <laughs> Through a mission of providing training and support, SpaceWorks endeavors to make Tacoma culturally vibrant and economically strong. This is managed through a couple of programs, one of those being a co-working program that provides affordable spaces and community for creative entrepreneurs. I think that artists and creative types, if you're a filmmaker, if you're a graphic designer, those are the people that are most attractive to this type of co-working, where it's open studio, where you are surrounded by other creative types. I think it's people who need space to let their ideas and their dreams come true, and also in a community to provide other, other inspiration and to kind of keep them accountable. Spaceworks Tacoma operates two different co-working spaces, one in downtown and the other on Hilltop. Amenities can include utilities, 24-hour access, and a professional location to meet with clients, leaving tenants the opportunity to focus on their creative pursuits. Bring your ideas, like bring your supplies, bring whatever you need to, to make your dreams come true, to make your projects come true. Bring your computer, we got uh, equipment, uh, whatever, whatever tools and equipment you need. There are many benefits to having artists and creative entrepreneurs in close proximity. Coworking, helps me know where to go. It helps me feel very, very grounded. It helps me talk to other people, see when the, where the best places to show are, see, um, bring somebody over and have a chat with them, talk to them about your work, what you're struggling with, or if you want to get a bit of a verbal reflection, it's great. Co-working can bring a new level of productivity to those who partake in this type of working environment. You know, it's a separation of work and your life. When I come down here every morning, it's that. I leave my life and I enter my job. I think that's how it's up my productivity, is, is just being separate from everything. It's, it's really wonderful. I do much better here and get a lot more done than when I had my studio at home. Having a secure space where projects can be left unfinished is something that tenants look for as well as affordability. The SpaceWorks co-working model is that we have a master lease. And so for example, this lease is about $5,000. That's a lot of money for an artist or an entrepreneur. So we've taken that space and we've subdivided it into 12 different studios. And the studios range from about $250 to $600, which is pretty reasonable and it's definitely more affordable than a lot of typical office spaces. Plus you also have the benefit of being surrounded by other creative types. If people are interested to learn more about co-working with SpaceWorks, one of the best ways to see their spaces is to visit their website and to set up a tour. SpaceWorks has monthly info sessions and that is a great opportunity to learn about co-working, but also our other program areas, uh, the business incubator and also the arts program. And there you get a chance to meet me, the program director, and also my amazing staff as well. You can sign up for co-working notifications on the SpaceWorks site to stay in the know when opportunities open up. Now, we're gonna show you how the Goodwill takes these items and turns them into a delicious meal. The products from their thrift store are what the Goodwill uses to fund their free culinary school that also runs an actual restaurant in Tacoma. Up next, the Urban Tabletop segment will take us to the neighborhood bistro for a demonstration on making duck ragu with hearty rutabaga ribbons. Hello. My name is Jeff Pratt and I'm the chef for culinary skills training at Goodwill in Tacoma. And today what we're going to do is we're going to uh, demo a winter pasta dish, duck ragu with rutabaga ribbons. What we have here first is two duck breasts. And what I'm going to do is remove the, the skin from the duck breast. And now we're going to brown the duck breast in a hot pan with just a little bit of olive oil. The idea is just to put a little bit of color on both sides of the duck breast before we build the rest of the sauce around it. So here at Goodwill, is we are a 12-week job training program. We teach people the skills that they need to know to be able to get 
uh, jobs in the restaurants and the food service industry. We're open for lunch Monday through Thursday from 11 to 1. Once the breasts are brown, we're going to go ahead and remove them from the pan. Saute about one medium onion. Add a little bit of fennel seed and garlic. And about a cup and a half of red wine. We're going to let that red wine reduce by about 50% just to concentrate the flavors. We're going to continue to build some flavor into the sauce uh, with some more herbs, a bay leaf, chopped parsley, fresh thyme leaves, and some plum tomatoes. Just a little bit of tomato paste to give it some body. To give this sauce a chance to marry all the flavors together, what we're now going to do is return the duck breast to the sauce, cover it, reduce the heat, and let it simmer for about 20 minutes. After cooking for about 20 minutes, the sauce will have thickened and the duck breast will be very tender. Set it aside. To finish the sauce, we're going to add a little bit of red wine vinegar just for some acidity and some raisins. Stir that in, let those flavors marry. While that's finishing, we're going to shred the duck breast. You have your duck breast, just two regular forks. You're just going to shred the duck breast into pieces. Here at Goodwill, at our, at our restaurant, we do a variety of different dishes and a variety of cooking methods. It provides our students an opportunity to learn and experience as wide a variety as possible of different, uh, different cuisines and different cooking methods. Okay, once the duck breast is shredded, we're going to return it to the sauce to stay warm. And we're going to turn our attention to the pasta. So today what we have is a paparadel pasta which is a wide egg noodle. I'm going to put that in and get it, get it warmed again. We've cooked it off a little bit earlier, but we want to uh, uh, bring, it back to, bring it back up to warm. And the other thing that we want to do today is incorporate a winter vegetable into the dish. What we have is a rutabaga, sort of an underappreciated winter vegetable. And what we want to do is cut the rutabaga into ribbons, and then as the pasta is cooking, for the last minute or so of cooking, uh, we'll just take the, take the rutabaga ribbons, put them right in the water with the pasta and let them cook. They're the same shape and color as the pasta and they'll, they'll marry right into the dish. Once your noodles are ready, bring them out and toss them right in with the pasta. Just a couple of turns in the sauce to coat them with the pasta. to the plate. And then just dress with some of the sauce that has that lovely duck in it. Garnish with a little bit of the chopped parsley, a little bit of Parmesan cheese, and we have a lovely pasta with duck and rutabaga ribbon. So thank you very much. My name is Jeff Pratt, and I'm the chef at uh, Goodwill here in Tacoma.
To find out more about the Culinary Skills Training Program and other available job trainings, visit the Goodwill site. After the break, we'll learn more about a project that's lighting up city streets. But first, the Urban Quick Tip will illustrate a coffee maker cleaner that will keep those morning cups tasting their best. Welcome back. Now we're going to learn more about a collaboration that worked to bring energy efficient LED lighting to city streets all across Tacoma. A recently completed project has brought fresh illumination to city streets. This effort focused on Tacoma's aging streetlights and replaced them with new energy efficient LED fixtures. So the old streetlights used to be a variety of different um, types of high intensity discharge lighting. Most of them are high pressure sodium, that yellow light. And so they were replaced with new, cleaner, brighter, whiter lights, the LED lights. This is a 200 watt high pressure sodium fixture that was part of the existing lights. And this is the equivalent LED fixture. It uses 58 watts instead of a total system of 240 watts. Work was completed three months ahead of schedule and nearly $2 million under budget. The change from the old street lights to the new LEDs can create a slightly different look to nighttime streets. Well, one of the things you'll notice is that it might be a little bit less bright overall, but it's more uniform. You don't have really bright spots and in between the lights, really dark spots. And so it's, it's really nice and uniform throughout. It's a cleaner, better color light, same color as the moon. 16,000 fixtures were changed out over the course of the project, which took less than a year. There are still some lights on the docket to be switched out to LED. Some of our lights uh, just can't change out because of the wiring. Some of our lights are ornamental fixtures and it's like changing a chandelier in your house. So we are in process of changing the actual lamp to an LED lamp and we'll be doing that over the course of the next year. So right now we're at about 85% LED. By the end of 2019, we should be about 95% LED. So we have a variety of ornamental fixtures around Tacoma. Uh, this is one of our residential post-op capitals. And so we're gonna be replacing these high pressure sodium fixtures with new LED lamp that will go in that socket and help us convert those. So this will be occurring over the next year. This project came together thanks to collaboration between the city's public works department and Tacoma Power, a partnership that leads to energy savings. This is a, a, a huge project for us. The city will be saving approximately 12 million kilowatt hours per year. And what that equates to is that's, you know, that's about the same as a thousand average Tacoma houses. These new fixtures consume about 71% less energy than before, which also brings cost savings through energy conservation. Some creative thinking around budgeting took place to make this project happen. The city budget didn't allow for a big project like this to happen all at once. We were able to create a rate that combines the payback of the fixtures and also the energy savings and made that into one rate. As the city will be paying for the fixtures over time, uh, combined with the energy, it actually produces a, a positive cash flow from, from year one. The LED street lights also add safety to city streets because of improved light quality. You can tell the difference between a red and a brown car now, where before you couldn't always do that. It's safer, the light is more consistent, and another big benefit is the fact that the new fixtures are dark sky compliant, and that means that there's zero percent light going up. The old fixtures had sometimes as much as 30% of the light that actually was escaping up. So for the, the people that really like dark sky, it makes a big difference. These new fixtures should last between 15 to 25 years with very little maintenance. 
Usually at this time of year, right after Halloween and daylight savings time, we're usually inundated with phone calls. This year, because of this project, we're actually able to focus on some of the other things that need to get done around the city. So this is great. Our, our phone just hasn't been ringing off the hook, which is wonderful. For more information on this program, visit the city site. Coming up next is the Urban How To. This do it yourself segment gives tips on selecting and properly caring for houseplants. Hello, my name is Travis Valbert with Garden Sphere, and you're here today with us at our Enviro House YouTube video on houseplants. Houseplants provide an array of wonderful benefits to the home, office, and work life. Proven benefits include purifying air, removing volatile organic chemicals, providing oxygen, providing antidepressive properties, increasing mood, increasing productivity, and of course, increasing aesthetics. Some of the best houseplants for these options include Peace Lily, which is one of the number one uh, oxygen providing houseplants. Snake plants, also known as Sansevieria, which provide some of the best air purification benefits, including removing volatile organic chemicals, some of which include formaldehyde, and may come from paint, drapes, carpets, and other unnatural materials. When you're dealing with houseplants, it's important to pick a size and a style that's going to work for you and your space. Houseplants love to stay contained as far as their roots are concerned. When we remove this Sansevieria from the pot, we'll see that a bit of dirt falls away and the roots are not fully rooted out yet. That would indicate that the plant would prefer to stay in a pot the size that it's in now. When choosing a pot to keep your house plant in, again, aesthetics play a major factor, but environmental health might also be of concern. For that reason, we like to use terracotta, resin or concrete, or recycled or natural materials such as these pots which are produced with recycled uh, bamboo products. Again, when looking at a pot for your houseplant, choose something that is of equal size to the plant that you're potting. For example, this nice concrete pot, the Sansevieria slips right in there beautifully and you're good to go. Houseplants can be repotted every two to three years and when you do repot them, you're gonna go up very minorly in size. For example, this pot is about a seven inch in diameter. You may move up to an eight or nine inch in diameter, but only after one to two years of growth in that pot. So when you're planting your houseplants, it's important to use an all-purpose potting soil, such as this Gardener and Bloom brand here. If you are repotting your houseplants, it's best to do it in the spring season when the plants are starting to actively grow again. However, you can do it year round. Keeping in mind that in the winter months, be sure to bring the potting soil inside for one to two days so that the temperature can adjust to the indoor settings. There are a number of less conventional or more current houseplants on the market, including terrariums, which can be done with foliage plants such as these, or succulents such as you're seeing inside and down here. Succulents include jade plant, which is extremely easy to care for and is known to bring good fortune and wealth into households. Air plants are another currently trending product uh, that also are very, very fun and provide a more interesting aesthetic value to your house or office. Hanging terrariums such as this one work beautifully, whereas air plants can be kept entirely by themselves or can be glued to driftwood, rocks, pebbles, or other materials using safe glue such as E6000, which does not counteract negatively with the air plants. Watering house plants is important to keep in mind as well. House plants do like to stay on the drier side, especially sedums, succulents, aloe veras, and jade plants. Foliage house plants like to be watered once a week and usually about one to two cups of water, depending on the pot size, whereas the sedums and succulents will like to be watered every four to six weeks, about half the quantity that you would use for a foliage plant. Air plants and terrariums benefit from being misted. This is a standard garden mister, provides a fine spray, and air plants get all of their nutrition and water via the foliage, so misting them thoroughly once a week is beneficial for those guys. These how-tos were created in partnership with the EnviroHouse Free Workshop Series, designed to support healthy, sustainable homes and gardens. For a full listing of workshops or to visit the EnviroHouse, check out the city site. 
Thanks for joining us for this edition of Urban Green. I'm Stacey Ellifrit, leaving you with more ways to engage in sustainable practices that are right for your lifestyle.